Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice non-standard equation. We have x over ln x equals e, and we're going to be solving for x values. So you can definitely guess and check at this point, and I'm pretty sure you got uh, some answers, but we're going to look at it uh, from a different perspective. Uh, at the end, we're also going to be taking a look at the graph of this function. There's a lot of ways to approach this problem, and if you think about the opposite or the reciprocals, you can get something like ln x over x equals 1 over e. I can't remember if we did this problem before. We might have. I'm going to check and find out, hopefully. But if you do know, please let me know. Anyways, so this function is actually a little more interesting than ln x over x because for positive x values, we're going to have uh, some problems. And why did I say positive values? Because ln x uh, requires that x is greater than 0. So we're basically going to be on the positive side of x. But not only that, uh, if you replace x with 1, then basically the denominator becomes 0, our expression becomes undefined. But let's look at it from a more sophisticated uh, angle. So here's what I mean by that. If x approaches 1 from the right of f of x, which is x over ln x, then we're going to get something like, okay, a positive number like 1 divided by positive 0, which is going to be a positive infinity, right? And then if limit as x approaches 1 from the left of x over ln x, then you're going to get something like, okay, if x is less than 1, uh, think about the graph of ln x. It looks like this, right? If x is less than 1, then your y values are going to be negative. And if x is uh, less than 1, it's still positive. So we're going to have a positive 1 divided by a negative 0, right? Does that make sense? And that's going to approach negative infinity. So this basically means that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Okay? So if the limit at a certain point, a finite value, is infinite, then you do have a vertical asymptote at that point. So in this case, it's x equals 1. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to take this into consideration, but we also said that x is greater than 0, so that kind of limits the domain of this function. Under these conditions, we're going to go ahead and differentiate this function and take a look at the first derivative and possible maxima and minima. I'll, I'll tell you why it's important, but let's go ahead and differentiate this function first. Hopefully you know the derivative rules uh, for, uh, you know, for differentiation. The derivative of a quotient, like we have the quotient rule, the derivative of the top is 1 times the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom is 1 over x times the top, which is x, divided by the bottom expression squared. Great. x cancels out, leaving us with f prime equals ln x minus 1 divided by ln x quantity squared. Great. Now, there, there's a couple things to note here. First of all, if you set f prime equal to 0, that's where the derivative changes sign. And that happens to be at ln x equals 1, which is x equals e. So we can kind of go ahead and make a graph real quick for this function uh, with two rows. One would be f prime, the other would be f, and our root is going to be at e for the derivative. Now let's take a look. If x is greater than e, like if we are here, then the derivative ln e is going to be greater than 1, so our derivative is going to be positive here. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and use a different color here. Let me erase clean up. All right, so if x is greater than 1 e, if x is greater than e, then the first derivative is going to be positive, otherwise it's going to be negative. This means our function is actually going to be decreasing and then increasing. But here's the problem. We have an issue at x equals 1, so we also have to include that in our graph. So we kind of have something like this. Obviously, it's also going to be negative here because uh, to the left of e, it's always negative. So our function is going to be decreasing, and obviously x needs to be positive, so we can also put the 0 here. You see, a one table gives us a lot of information, actually, if you can digest it. So uh, our graph is going to start at 0, and 0 is going to be an open dot, obviously. But it's going to decrease, and there's an asymptote. So uh, I'll show you the graph at the end, but basically you're looking at something like this, right? We have a graph that starts at... By the way, what is the value at 0 if it existed? It doesn't, right? 
I mean, we don't have a value of uh, at x equals zero. Uh, but anyways, our function is going to be decreasing. So it kind of needs to go like this, right? It kind of needs to go like this. But the problem is for x equals zero, we get zero divided by ln zero, but ln zero is undefined. So we're probably going to have an open dot here and then our graph is going to continue like this. So it's supposed to decrease on that interval and then it, it should continue to decrease, but then it'll increase at E. If you replace X with E here, you get E over ln E, which is E over one, which is E. So at E comma E, you actually have a minimum point because this is a local minimum, right? The reason why I say local is because that's not the absolute minimum value for our function. But at e comma e, you're going to have, I don't know if that's accurate, but it's probably more accurate. At e comma e, you're going to have a minimum, which means your function is supposed to decrease and then increase so on and so forth. Anyways, I'll show you a neater uh, graph at the end, but let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this, uh, the consequence of uh, what we found. So we are trying to solve this equation, x over ln x is equal to e. And we just find that our function f of x happens to have a minimum at x equals e and f of e is equal to e. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It means that you're going to have a minimum at e comma e and the vertical line y equals e is just going to be tangent to the graph. Because if you are trying to find the uh, slope of the tangent at e, then you would definitely get uh, zero, right? Okay. Because that would give you uh, zero here. Make sense? Where the derivative is zero and it changes sign, then we have a maximum or minimum point. Obviously, you can also look at the second derivative to see if there's any inflection points for this graph. But I don't think this graph will have any inflection points as far as I know. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now, there's obviously other ways to look at the uh, problem, like you could go ahead and cross multiply. You'll be getting x equals ln x times e or e ln x. And then you could kind of bring the e over here, x equals ln x, x to the power e. And then by using the definition of logs, this means e to the x equals x to the e. x to the e equals e to the x. And I believe we've done this video before. I'll try to share this right here. Hopefully you can check that out as well. And uh, this gives us the exact same solution, x equals e, because as you can see, e to the power e equals e to the power e. Make sense? Okay, that's another way to look at it. So this problem is actually very similar to this one, except uh, we have, uh, if you're looking at the graph of e to the x or x to the e, they're not gonna have as any asymptotes, uh, but our function will because it's uh, considered a rational function. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick and then we'll finish up with that. As you can see here, our graph starts at 0, 0, but that's an open dot because at zero it's undefined. And our graph is decreasing because of the vertical asymptote. And then it has a minimum at e comma e. Therefore, it is going to intersect the graph at only one point. This means, this means that x equals e is the only solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.